This morning we are joined by one of our good friends, always likes to come by when he is in town. Rajiv Sad, y'all, is here. Yay, Rajiv joins us ahead of a big show tonight. How you doing, man? Super excited. I do know my name. <laughs> well, you know, we were gonna start. go ahead and read it anyway, just in case. I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, you reminded me of it. <laughs> Might also be not no, I'm not, but no. I am the guy opening for it. You are. Let's let's just jump right in with uh, that. Yeah, sorry, well, I'm No, no, no that, that's right perfect. In. So what when you're the opener, when you're when you're the guy who has got to kind of set the table, so to speak, extra pressure? No, and less. Uh, okay, really? Yeah, less. Right. Okay. Way less. Okay. I think. I mean, you, look, you're taking the bullet because you're the first one. Up. Thanks for reminding me. By the way, I forgot about that. Actually, I did. Yeah, good now. Right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great first question. Out the gate. Uh, it, it is a, in that sense, but the audience doesn't have much of the way of expectations because a lot of time when they go to a comedy show, people don't. Oh, they're like, oh, there's an opener. Okay. It's kind of a, a bonus, like when the chef sends out something, like, oh, it's something from the chef. Oh, that's oh. Yes. And If yeah. it's terrible, you're like, well, it was free. <laughs> And you guys are friends, right? So do you ever kind of, are your sets totally separate? Do you ever do stuff together? Uh, we, our sets are totally separate. He lived with me for a couple of years at, in, in Los Angeles oh, wow. in Studio City, which is super cool, super fun. So I got to know him really well. Yeah. yeah I went to his wedding. I mean, we go pretty far back, which is kind of cool. So our sets are, are very different, though. And uh, so I think the audience is in for a treat. When you are coming on stage and you know he's coming on later, do you know what he's going to like? Do you know what his set is like before he hits the stage? I don't. Okay. So I haven't seen him on this tour. I mean, I know what his last couple of shows look like, and I have a general sense of it. I also know his head writer separately. Okay. So it's sort of like a, you know, kind of, I, I have a general sense of what it, it's going to be like, but you just got to get up and do your thing do your regardless, thing. right? Okay. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. You, you don't try to meld it, you know, and, and all that, and well, just hope there's not much overlap. That was kind of going to be one of my questions, mm -hmm. was when you come back to T Cincinnati, you yeah. know, uh, do you kind of meld your show to be Cincinnati-ish? Like any I, I Cincinnati do. Kind there of will jokes? be a lot of local color. Local, co okay. There okay. will be. I, I just enjoy that sort of thing, and I think that if you're when in Rome, you know, right. so you may as well do some of those jokes. Yeah. But I'm not apparently going to do it today. I'm just going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you're like that was a setup for you to do a joke. <laughs> no, by the no, way, no, just no. in case you we don't know anything about TV. So, <laughs> no. So when you're when you're interacting with the audience in that way. Do you like crowd work? Do you do you like do you like that kind of thing or Given given the temperature at some comedy shows anymore, right. are, are right. you like, yeah, I'm just gonna do my do my thing and kind of stay away from that kind of thing? I love crowd work. I think it's super fun. I, yeah. I, mean, I, I believe I'm good at it. I like doing it. This is a huge venue, though. I think it's yeah. like 4,500. It's a pretty. It's and it's and it's new. It's it's ready, man. Yeah, right. it's, it's a so nice place. It's it's a little harder to do crowd work in something that big because oh, you're kind sure. of pointing someone out. I mean, if they have big screens and they can see their reactions and stuff, it's great. But otherwise, you you kind of do your set because you, I'm doing what 15, 20 minutes, something like that yeah. so you, you're just boom 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 you're getting to it you know if you have an hour hour and a half which I think his show is then you can sort of let the track breathe yeah. I, I heard all the rap uh, you know allusions you were making earlier so yes, let we're the so track breathe is, is so one thank of them. Yeah. thank you so, for that yeah for dropping some sweet <laughs> rhymes on us today. when when you come back to town do you are there any places that you have to hit up like you've got to go to a certain place for Lunch or dinner or something. Am I allowed to plug? I mean, plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Huh? I'm not getting slow. paid. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can just go. I, I should, they yeah, all the things. Well, you have Love and Tacos up there. Yeah. Yes. So they just opened a Torchy's Tacos here. Yes. Yeah. We have, I have not been. Have you? I have not either. My okay. wife is from Austin. Okay. And I blew her mind last night when I took her to the restaurant. I didn't tell her that's where we're going. Oh, that's fun. And it's up in Liberty Township, and it's the best tacos I've ever had. Is that where they, the chain is okay. from? Yeah, it's, is from uh, it's from Texas. Okay. And uh, on our way here, here, her brother met us at the Dallas airport to bring us Torchy's tacos. Wow. I didn't know it was here. That's how much we love it. I mean, we saw him and his family right. and his kids. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Family. <laughs> we should give you the tacos. Yeah, that's all great. But the tacos. I mean, that's okay. really, that that's was where, really, that's, that's really the draw. And then we get here, and I'm, I'm meeting a friend the night before, and I drive by a Torchy's Tacos. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, yes, my usual run is La Rosa's, yep. Graders, yep. Skyline. That's my thing. Dewey's, if I can make it over there. But yeah. we're yeah. in Fairfield, so East Side is a little bit farther for us, but okay. Dewey's is great. I heard Kelsey came here and went back to Adriatico's. Yeah, it went back to Adriatico's. I had a contest where they were diving into pools of Skyline chili to hey, find you know, his that, Super Bowl ring. Just like nuts, He lost man. the Super Bowl ring. In the chili, he was hanging. Oh, they were hanging out yeah. at um, Uncle William's. Well, better than his brother who never won one. Yeah. Right? Oh. oh, you know that should have been what he said. Yeah. Poor Jason. So, sorry, I cut you off. There. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was, I was thinking about you coming back to town. And you were just back in town last weekend as well. Yeah. Um, how did everything go last weekend? How do you approach what you did last weekend as opposed yeah. to approaching tonight? So my mom had this Bollywood show. Yeah. And I was supposed to be on with you a week ago. 
and we landed at CVG at 2.45 in the morning. I went to bed at 5, and oh. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to yeah. get up at 7, which is 4 come for me. Come on, you didn't push yourself to come in here? Yeah, yeah I tell you, it's a moneymaker right here. Yeah, you know, Chad, you know. Fuck, you know. Chad knows more than you know. Fun, but Clearly. We both know. Clearly. Both know. You know how it is. But it, it, how it, do you, your mom's really involved with a lot of sort of big events and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I think yeah. you had a run, right? So yeah. my mom, Lalita Satyal, who's over here to the side, uh, with my publicist, Fred Anderson, standing over there, we... Uh, we had a great time. She put together this Bollywood show. Uh, she lived in uh, Hamilton when she first got to the United States. Uh, Oxford, then Hamilton, then Fairfield. So all of the you know Miami University yep. you know <laughs> uh, chain there. And taught at Hamilton schools for 36 years. Oh, wow. And was able to bring this cultural show called Bollywood at the Fitton Center over there. Super fun. And it, it was it was sold out. Uh, yeah. A bunch of dances. I am seated. And nice. it was it was really fun. It was great for her to uh, share her culture uh, with with Hamilton and the area beyond. The yeah. Fitton Center does great work. And Hamilton, are you surprised every time you come back about how I am. Hamilton is like booming? It's yeah. they're doing it awesome really stuff. Is. It's not there. the punchline that it used to be. Right. right. So from a joke standpoint, <laughs> Hamilton, <laughs> Hamilton, Hamilton <laughs> slow down. <laughs> slow down. It's not it's really? not a joke anymore. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm from Hamilton. We're like, oh, Hamilton, that's crazy, brown guy. Right. But now it's like, no, it's it's uh, <laughs> you know, they've got more more stuff going on now. Yeah, they do. You you have been such a good friend to us for so many years coming in to visit. How has your how has your comedy changed in that time? Do you, are things is it different now? Do you go you go about things different, or are audiences different, or a little bit of both? I think it's a little bit of both. I, I do read about stuff happening on college campuses and the comedians going there and stuff like that. Even Jerry Seinfeld and Chris Rock talked about that. I think they have the luxury of not necessarily having to go there anymore. But I mean, I performed. A few years ago at Amherst and Brown, and these are very liberal campuses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do, you know, racial, political, all the stuff that I'll do tonight. And, I, you know, I, I think that jokes still have to be funny. There still has to be a joke there. I think people get into trouble when they pontificate. You know, mm -hmm. when they go, well, here's what I think about whatever. It's like, well, that's not why people came to a comedy show. No. They came to a comedy show to laugh. So I don't, people can, I made all sorts of, you know, very sensitive jokes last week in Hamilton, but there's a punchline. So if you're making right. a joke, I think people, it's like golf, you know, where there, there's an intent, and you know, you go to swing and you miss the ball entirely, and you tell your friends, well, that was a practice swing. <laughs> Everybody knows it wasn't a practice right. swing. Because they can see you sort of practicing, and the next thing you know, you kind of went for it. You're like, oh, I was kidding. Right. They're like, no, you no, weren't. You are. And in the same way, people are like, well, I was joking. And people are like, no, you weren't. It seemed like you were t right. trying to tell us something. Tell. But then people also can tell when it's a joke. And maybe it was a bad joke or a joke that missed, like an intent in golf, but people will grant to that. Audiences are still pretty gracious about that. Yeah, like they go, they get it. Like if you tell, because we've all been there where we tell a joke and it didn't land. Yes. And you know, you're doing an hour or whatever it is, like not everything's going to be gold. I mean, no matter whose show you go to, not everything hits. Yeah. If people aren't able to see you tonight, You've got you've got the podcast. You got a lot of other ways people can catch up with what you're doing. Break that all down for us. Well, funnyindian.com has been my website for a long time. I beat 1.4 billion Indians to this, by the way. Oh, we got a clip showing uh, Hassan and me. So that is my show. He was my very first guest when cool, I launched man. my talk show called "What Do You Bring to the Table." It's on YouTube. You can link to it from funnyindian.com. And you know, there he is explaining to me. I think that's the five ingredients for success. And if you want to know what they are, well, you got to watch the show. Okay. I, I don't remember. That's my way of saying I don't remember. <laughs> what they were. I could probably name two or three of them. Uh, but he he breaks down his success, how he got there. It was really something having him as a roommate too, because I got to see sort of backstage what what is this guy like. Yeah. And I was like, either he's going to be one of the biggest comedians in the world because he would just sit there and rant, or he's going to be homeless. I was like, <laughs> I mean, it's one or the other with this guy. I'm glad it worked out. The Yes, it seems to be yeah, working out right now, you know, which is worked good. out this way. So I'm going to be screening my full, uh, full-length stand-up special in New York City on May 9th. So if you have people awesome. in New York, uh, I'm going to be screening something I did. What's an? It's an hour long. I had my dry bar comedy special come out. That's 30 minutes. That's going to be releasing in the next few months. We've got clips up on Facebook and and Instagram. Jeez, and you're not like busy that. at all. Busy at all. Are not you? busy yeah. at all. No. Writing a sitcom pilot. I don't know, doing a bunch of things. You know, you hope at least one of these things goes. But right. what is going is the screening on May 9th in New York and tonight with Hudson Minaj. And the podcast. FunnyIndian.com, all of the things you can find there. Thanks for coming to visit us. Yeah, thank you we so really much. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Continue Thanks, success, buddy. Yeah, Thanks. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate it. All right, all right we you. will uh, be right back. Hey there. Yeah, you could stop watching right now, but let's be honest, you don't want to do that. Hit the links or click subscribe to see more amazing content from all of us here at Local 12.